Okay, uh, hello everybody. My name is Ulrich. Um, I'm happy um, to talk about repairing and optimizing PDF files. Actually, I'm jumping in here for uh, Hans Barefuss, who couldn't make the trip uh, to the US. Uh, and I'm more than happy to answer all your questions, but please bear in mind uh, that I'm not the developer. During the presentation, you will learn uh, what the difference between PDF repair and recovery are. Furthermore, you will get to know the various reasons for PDF files being corrupt or damaged. We will see some typical samples for PDF repair and recovery action during my presentation as well. Most of the people uh, agree probably with me uh, optimization has something to do with reducing file size. Sometimes it's about faster rendering. Anyway, optimization is a wide topic and it's certainly worth having a closer look at it. Again, we will see some typical samples for PDF optimization during my presentation. Unfortunately, we cannot look at every single aspect since there are too many. Let me list the most important optimization areas, which is images, embedded fonts, and shared objects. There, are, uh, there might be various reasons for a PDF file being corrupt or damaged. Here are the most common ones. Systematic errors by bad creator or processing software unwanted modification of the PDF stream caused by storage and communication software, example, uh, so-called ASCII mode of source safe or uh, FTP transfer, etc. Data loss or corruption by an unreliable communication line or a disk crash. If the repair tool is aware of the nature of corruption, it can carry out specific fixes. Systematic errors. If the creator software is known, then the repair tool can find and fix typical errors, such as missing mandatory directory entries, systematically wrong object structures, such as names instead of strings, badly formatted fonts, and the like. Unwanted modification. A PDF file can be created in ASCII mode, if this is the case, then modification, such as inserting line breaks or replacing carriage returns, is not critical. If the PDF file is created in binary mode, then the stream object can most likely not be recovered. Data loss or corruption. In this case, the file cannot be repaired and the information which is still valid, such as scanned images, etc., can be recovered and put into a new output file. <coughs> How does information recovery work? On the left-hand side, you can see a damaged PDF file, which was caused through a disk crash. The PDF file is missing a cross-reference table and some individual objects. A repair tool usually proceeds in two steps. Analysis, check the file header and trailer, check the cross-reference table, check the individual objects, check the root objects, page tree, and the related data structure. If the analysis shows that the root object can be found and the page tree is intact, then it can repair the file. If not, then it must recover as much as possible from the file and create a new one. Once again, one of the most often found damage is an invalid cross-reference table. In general, this is not critical and the tool can recover it by scanning through the file and rebuild it from the found objects. If there are redundant objects, then the last one is used. Let's switch to optimization. P 
PDF optimization isn't just the reducing of file size. By optimizing a PDF file, we think much more of repairing the file to fit the requirement of a certain target environment by adding and or removing information. If we take the use case of publication over the internet, most of the images do not need a higher resolution than 300 dpa. No need for complicated color spaces and the like. Simple sRGB is good enough to display the document in a browser. A complete different scenario is printing. The use of CMYK and spot colors is important and so are the embedded fonts which have to be merged in order to scope with the limited resources of the print devices. Remove interactive and accessibility feature since they are not important for the print process. So how does this work? An easy sample for a PDF optimization is recompress of data streams. Typically, all the files containing data streams which were compressed with less sophisticated algorithms than newer files. Just for that fact, it could be beneficial for you to compress the PDF files. There are lossless compression algorithms such as LZW and CCIT Group 4. They can be replaced by their more modern counterparts FLATE and JBIG2. On the other hand, there exists lossy compression algorithm such as JPEG and JPEG 2000. A recompression should be avoided with JPEG and JPEG 2000 since this introduces even more loss. By using lossy compression algorithm such as JPEG and JPEG 2000, you can normally choose the desired quality. With the quality factor, you can decide between smaller file size versus picture quality loss. The slide I have up here shows you the picture quality of JPEG compression. The quality factor can be set to 100 for the best possible image or to 1 for the worst result. The picture to your very left is compressed with factor 75 and the picture to the very right with 10. The more you decrease the quality the more you will notice artifacts. On the other hand, you can see the decrease in file size. By using JPEG 2000 compression, you will see similar results, with the only difference that the artifacts look different. JPEG 2 can be used in two modes, lossless and lossy. In the lossless mode, the decompressed image is binary, identical to the image before it has compressed. In lossy mode, some pixels may differ in favor of a better compression rate. However, we highly recommend not to use lossy mode at all. Actually, in order to avoid security discussions, the setting of uh, the quality parameter has been disabled in our software since uh, the version 4.6 with the effect that only lossless compression is being used. So how does um, image downsampling and filtering works? The file size of a PDF can be dramatically reduced by downsampling of images if they are embedded in high resolution. As an example, an image resolution of 2400 dpi or higher, they deliver a perfect result when printing. To display the same image as a web application, through a web application the resolution of 300 dpi is more than sufficient. 
The resolution of an image is reduced by using low-pass filter, example Gauss. The low-pass filter merges many pixels to one single, you can see. The effect of downsampling. On this slide, you can see the effect of downsampling. Starting with a re resolution of uh, 96 dpi, the resolution is minimized step by step. You will notice that the size of the uncompressed image is decreasing quickly. On the other hand, a further reduction just produces a poorer image quality and not much gain on the file size. Let's make a more realistic example. A color scanned page in letter format is um, resulting in a TIFF of about 400 megabyte in size if the resolution is set to 1200 dpi uncompressed with um, RGB colors. The same page can be downsampled to 300 dpi and is only 26 megabyte in size. Later, so 400 megabyte down to 26 megabyte. Later in this presentation, you will learn how to decrease this 26 megabyte file even down to roughly 80 kilobyte. Upsampling of images is exactly the opposite of downsampling, what we have just discussed meaning the resolution of the image is increased to the level that it matches the output device. Upsampling is most of the time not needed since viewer and printer are taking care of it automatically. On the other hand, you cannot define how the upsampling is done. In some specific cases, it is of advantage to control this upsampling of the image for example, specifically in pre-press preparation. So when upscaling an image, a so-called interpolation algorithm is used. A single pixel is now inflated to multiple pixels. And the pixel quadrants are softened at the edges. The various interpolation methods, such as bilinear, biquadratic, and bicubic can be used. This next slide shows you how upsampling works. The image with a resolution of 10 dpi is converted into a new image with 96 dpi. As you can see, the pixel quadrants are disappearing and the image quality is getting better compared to the image at the left. Again, here, a more realistic um, situation, of course, is a scanned image with 300 dpi, which would be printed with 2400 dpi. So now I've told you we can make it even smaller with down to 80 kilobytes. Mixed raster content, or the abbreviation MRC, is a process to reduce the size of raster images. It is well known since PDF-A is used to archive scanned documents. The original image on the left is scanned at 300 dpi. The resulting TIFF is uncompressed, about 26 megabytes in file size. Now if you compress this with LZW, <coughs> the new image would be about 1.2 megabyte. By using the MR MRC process, we can even minimize that file any further. So how does this work? The MRC process separates the color information into layers. A background layer, a mask layer, and the number of foreground layers. A, typic a typical example is a page that contains black text 
with some words emphasizing in red and blue. The mask then would contain the shapes of the characteristic and the background layer, the color of the text. It is obvious that the mask cannot be efficiently compressed with G4 or JPEG2, and the background layer with either JPEG or JPEG 2000 using a very low resolution. When using this mechanism, a second a scanned page can be reduced to appro approximately 50 to 80 kilobytes with good quality. This result cannot be achieved by just using a lossy compression algorithm. However, if the page contains graphic or images, then these have to be isolated and compressed with good quality in one or several foreground layers. The isolation process is called segmentation and it has an essential part of the MRC mechanism. Okay, optimization of resources of merged documents. This slide shows a complete different use case, which is typically to mass printing of PDF files. In this scenario, multiple files are merged into one big batch in order for printing services being more efficient. The sample I'm showing here deals with multiple invoices. The same could be true uh, or applied to insurance companies with insurance policies or bank account statements. Each source file is a complete PDF file containing a logo, fonts and color profiles. If multiple PDF files are now merged together, the resources are most likely multiple times available. It is quite common that big batches of merged files contain hundreds of embedded fonts. The probability is very high that you run into production failure, since the print devices cannot scope with such a huge volume. Optimizing such a batch is not very easy, as it might seem on the first glance. Identical logos and color profiles can be recognized and multiple occurrences can be replaced by a single occurrence. In terms of the fonts, the issue is more complex. The font subset of the source files are typically different and need to be merged. Not all of the subsets can be merged, even so they have the same font names. Example, if the source file contains different subset of Arial font, it needs to be checked forehand which version of the font is already present. Different version of the same font cannot be merged and have to be treated as individual fonts. So, redundant objects such as logos and color profile can be easily spotted and optimized. This slide shows the sample of an image resource. As soon as the optimizer recognizes the image, which has already been used at a different location, a reference is placed to the dictionary object. With that simple trick, redundant images are eliminated and the file size can be reduced, specifically if the document contains multiple pages. Think again of this batch of invoices. And each of the invoices had logos, etc. Optimization of fonts isn't as easy as you would think in the first place. As I have showed you before, identical logos and color profile, which occur multiple times, can be easily replaced by a single occurrence. Generally, font subsets are different in each source file, and therefore, merging is not really easy. 
As I've said before, the source file contains different subsets of the Arial font. It needs to be checked beforehand which version of the font is already present. If it's a different version of the same font, it cannot be merged and has to be treated as an individual one. Removing unwanted structures. Again, this depends largely on the intended usage of the PDF files. Not all of the data structure is needed. If you are going to print the file with interactive elements such as named destination and article threads <coughs> are not needed. Furthermore, in the given scenario, information of accessibility as the document structure tree can be removed in order to shrink the file size any further. All the constructs like thumbnails, spider information from web capture can be removed as well, since only a few application really depend on that information. On the other hand, you should be very carefully with information such as metadata and private data like page piece info. A thorough analyze has to be performed in order to find out which application is still using that data before removing it. Finally, we have um, fast web viewing. A linearized PDF file is a special format of a PDF file that makes viewing faster over the internet. Linearized PDF files contains information that allow a byte streaming server to download the PDF file one page at a time. Linearization adds information for fast web viewing and thus does not reduce the file size. On the contrary, the PDF file will be increased by roughly 10% and should only be used for document publication over the internet. With this slide, I'm actually already at the end um, of the presentation. If you're um, interested in seeing um, some live demos, I mean, in the slides you saw the picture, um, the, the session that takes place um, around 4 p.m., I will uh, show you um, how the downsampling and upsampling, etc., uh, MRC algorithm uh, works in real life. Um, I won't have slides for that, so we're really uh, doing it directly on my machine and uh, seeing it. Um, seeing the results, uh, how you can really uh, um, uh, create out of a 26 megabyte file, an 80 kilobyte uh, file, which is quite a good uh, quality. Is, is, is MRC, is that, is that your technology? No, that it stands for mixed raster content. I've never heard of it. Uh, that's uh, quite common use um, in, uh, in the scanning industry. So um, if you um, can I say, um, if you have um, um, large scanners, especially if you do um, color scanning, you want to segment um, the file in order to use different algorithms uh, for each layer. So you have the, um, the option, the possibility to use a different algorithm to compress the fonts versus the image. Yeah, that's quite... Um, scanning fonts are an issue. Depending if you uh, add OCR, oh, okay. <laughs> maybe uh, you would like to create intelligent uh, PDFA files which are searchable. Uh -huh. And when, when will you be showing this? At 4 o'clock, you said? Yeah, at, uh, what is it? I think 3.50 or when is the next session? 3.50? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, okay. yeah. Just, just after this one, yes. Yeah, in this room, okay. In this room, yes. Um, can you go through a little bit better or a little bit more information on how you handle the deduplication of your font data? Because I don't think you're probably going to be doing that in your demonstration. So yeah, I'm um, like getting rid of the redundant logos yeah. and objects. So not, not, not the redundant logos. That's compared to re removing fonts, deduping logos is a trivial task. Uh -huh. um, how do you how do you 
deduped your fonts? I mean, what's the what's the general process that you go through to de that the software goes through to deduplicate your fonts? Um, like each 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 individual PDF is inspe is inspected basically. Mm -hmm. Uh, a list is built on uh, like the Oriol font type, which right. I've mentioned in my um, uh, presentation, right. and the version. Um, um, depending where the file got created, like if you have, uh, I don't know, an old uh, Windows 98 mm -hmm. machine, uh, there is a different level of Oriol fonts yep. embedded than, uh, let's say, with a Windows 8. Yeah, so it's stored in the font metadata table. Ex yeah. ex exactly, yes. So, and okay. So you check the versions. You check the versions. Let's, say, let's say the versions match. Yes. And um, I've got a subset in this PDF. I've got a uh -huh. subset in these, this PDF. Uh -huh. The versions match, so my metrics are going to be equal. Yes. How do you go through and merge the two subsets together? If then you can cross-reference. And then, then you can remove them if they have the same version. But the thing is, is one subset maybe have a different set of glyphs than the other subset. So you have to merge the two glyph sets together in order to get a spanning, yeah. span font of the, uh, for the entire document yeah. now. So how do you handle merging that so yeah. we're not breaking um, things? The, the links. Um, Good question. <laughs> As I've said, um, I'm unfortunately not the developer in this okay, company. That's, that's, no, thank um, you. But um, um, I can um, leave your business card with me, and I make sure that uh, Hans, who was supposed to give the presentation, uh, will uh, give you an in-depth answer um, uh, on your question. Okay. I what I uh, probably wanted to highlight, um, um, we have um, a good block out. Um, if you're interested about um, different topics like uh, font merging as well as MRC, um, if you go to our blog.pdf-tools.com website, you will see a lot of, um, uh, it's a technical blog. Okay. Um, so it's not a marketing driven blog. It's really a high level technical blog. Um, you will see uh, specifically addressing uh, the questions you just had about uh, um, font merging, etc. There is a, an individual article. Uh, most of uh, the stuff we have just talked about, repairing, optimization, uh, mixed roster content, you find um, mm -hmm. information in that technical blog. Okay. No, and of course, you're uh, more than welcome uh, to uh, add comments uh, <laughs> <laughs> to the blog. Thank you. That that helps. <laughs> if, if I've been given three or four different documents that mm -hmm. I have decided to combine, mm -hmm. do I run the optimizer on those as separate documents before I combine them? Or do I combine them and then run the optimizer, or do I do it both times? Mm, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, you, um, the, the second one in order you just mentioned, you, you would do the merge first. So you put them all together. That's actually what I'm showing with about I have a bunch of thousand uh, invoices uh, in the next session. Um, I show you how um, um, on the fly uh, I build like I have thousand individual PDF files and I merge them together in one big file. Uh, one PDF with thousand pages, and once I have created that big PDF file with uh, one thousand pages, I will then run the optimization. Because only then, when I have the thousand, uh, because initially, like I have the thousand logos in that PDF, and then basically the thousand logos and uh, all the stuff like uh, about the font subsetting uh, takes place. Uh, but for that purpose, that the documents have to be merged beforehand. But wouldn't you want to run a, a pre-process before you did the merge to try, to try and correct any structural issues in the, in the incoming PDFs? Uh, you could, but... Because um, uh, you, you may not own the source. You may not know where the source came from. It may yeah. be a rather old library that's, got, that's problematic. Yeah. You know, slightly buggy. Maybe the, their XREF table didn't calculate. Yeah, but we we, we do those kind of things uh, during the merge process. We you already guys do that check. Uh, yeah, exactly. Okay. Uh, during the, the the merge process, we already do those kind of uh, uh, consistency checks, of okay. course. Is that also true on scanned images, not OCR, where you might have a mixture of RGB and uh, grayscale images? Would you? Combine them all first and then run compression, or? Uh, yes. 
exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> there are no other questions. Uh, went a little bit uh, faster through uh, the whole presentation. Thanks. <laughs>